Brian, hey, I wanted to talk to you uh, and give you a little bit of an overview of what's going on with Digibyte. And uh, there are several things. Uh, first of all, let's just do it from the ideological or emotional part of it. As many moons ago, um, I was, I don't even want to tell you how long ago, but I was introduced to the Linux world, this GNU public license based thing by Linus Torvalds, released it. Uh, it was put out on the internet for everybody to enjoy, including the source code so you could customize it. And I tweedled array, I wrote a few shell scripts, and you know, and I, I was I taught my youngest one to write a little shell script, a hello world, and some other cool things, and I, I found ways to do some cool networking things, and a couple of friends of mine had uh, little Linux servers, and we would secure shell and write to our screen, and all this cool stuff, and then as time went on, uh, Red Hat kind of came out with a very cool uh, offering that kind of gave you the desktop thing, so it kind of pulled me into the you know the mouse mouse thing. So I got a chance to kind of have a little touch of GUI in it, and it was like a glorious world. Hell, they didn't even heck, they didn't even have a um, a real browser. It was called Arena. Arena. Do you remember it? Kind of uh, taupe. Uh, probably don't go for sites and sweet bulletin boards and and so on and it was a really cool thing it was this sort of building counterculture of uh, Linux users while everybody was pointing and clicking their way to ecstasy with Windows uh, we little underground people were doing this and so you can see why I kind of have this um, I don't want to say underdog but I have a feeling a sense for uh, at a, at a connection to uh, Jared Tate and, and Josiah and everybody who's involved in the Digibyte Foundation. It's a personal issue. I mean, it, it really is. So that being said, uh, let me move on to the next part of this thing because the uh, Digibyte block, digi block, digi blockchain is, uh, it, it's like kind of the gold standard now for, you know, asset or transfer, I should just say, for moving things from one place to another, stuff and things. And so that's what I want to really talk about is, um, I have a PBX, I call it the Vaster Media System, and it's based on the Asterisk platform, and it rocks the house. I've got, I got customers who just, I mean, they adore this machine. I mean, they love it. And, uh, I got some cool uh, sort of half-baked methods of uh, when you leave the office, it causes the lack of the logged-in host you know, from your smartphone and causes your, your greeting to change. You know, hi, this is Brian. I stepped away from my desk. But if I walk out the office and my cell phone comes back around, my smartphone comes back around and, and logs in through 4G or a foreign host, then my greeting changes. Hi, this is Brian, I stepped out of the office. Heck, you know, I might even take it a step farther and say, you know, get all the GPS and do the, the whole thing in there and say, hi, this is Brian, I'm at Starbucks. A, a golf course, I don't play golf. I'm at the bar. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's just another story. And so anyway, where Digibyte, the Digibyte Foundation's offering kind of comes into this thing is, I, it dawned on me. I started to click that you know one of the things that I'm always struggling with with customers is they want this whole new mobile thing. They're they're I, mine are all mobile architects and uh, heck even lawyers and and on and on and on. And uh, this play this area is like developing big anyway. So it's California. They're spending them tax dollars to build the thing. Anyway, uh, so so since I have a listening PBX. Uh, and, 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 and you who are into uh, SIP and VoIP, you may have done this, I've done it just for the heck of it, is you know, you open a port, the port 5060, UDP, and you just, you just get a SIP phone, you assign it an IP address, and you steer the, uh, the port 5060 to it, wait one hour, wait 45 minutes, SIP Vicious will be the first one that attacks your phone. And, the, and so really what I'm doing is I'm letting SIP Vicious and, and hackers prove to me exactly what I already know and that's if you come to the, my doorstep and you start shoving stuff at me, my, pho my phone, my SIP phone or my PBX sees your messages and starts to react to it. Okay, so way back before DigiID, uh, is was coming out, I thought, you know, Brian, I'm going to put the Digibyte Core wallet in my PBX. And I'm going to start qu querying, just have this recursive query of chain states and every, every bit of 
digit digibyte of every information that I can get get and perhaps I might use the public key as the secret the 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 SIP password maybe I'll use the public key and then I'll just query an exchange and I'll make it it'll spawn the session and cause the creation of a station in the field so somebody could basically go oh my god I need to be connected to my office now they can you know, send send digibyte and coin and the PBX will respond and that, boy that's a talking about half bait boy you know what I'm saying but then uh, uh, Jared and his crew uh, Josiah Spackman and, and uh, Jared and everybody came out with it that's going to tune to be released for real kind of moving its way slowly making its way out of the beta world the uh, digi ID and I'm gonna I'm gonna learn the process of what I expect to see at the end and and it uh, I think I can take this this machine here, this monster, or the ones I have installed, which I'm going to talk a little more about that. But uh, and nobody understands what it is I'm doing. You know, everybody says, "You're oh, Brian, you I see you're in the cloud hosted business." I'm like, "No, I'm in the fog hosted business. You still have an asset on site, uh, but uh, as your Android is to Google, Vastra." systems are to the Vastra link system in here the Vastra media systems same there's a similar very similar relationship hey come on I'm, I'm gonna copy Google you know why do I have to reinvent anyway and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about you geeks out there know exactly what I'm talking about if somebody's done the research why you know why not fold that into your product uh, but anyway it's kind of Jared and and Josiah and gang I uh, you, you already know that I'm where I'm going with this. I've kind of I've told you, you've given you hints about what I'm trying to endeavor to do. I absolutely am going to need your help because I'm, you know, I, I, I'm here. I can write, you know, I can, I can write levels of use in this system. But I'm not all the way, but I can sure as heck take a message and process it. I can take a message from the outside regardless of what it is. You know, even going back to some old DDE link or something, and I can actually sit, receive that and I can process it and, and set a series of instructions to perform a task. So I know that I could do that. That is the piece, uh, the expectation of the receiving side. So, I, you know, if I have a QR code out there on a portal and I want, and I just people can do it or they just have a, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All I'm thinking is I want to be able to give my customers and other many others the uh, latitude of being able to be agile and and pop in and create a session. Now I, I want you to understand. I've got this thing put together. I call it the Vastra Community, and that's pretty much what I'm telling you with this link. And I, I, I'll just put it simply: you buy my product, your business or person, you buy my product, and it's there's a wafer installed on your site. I, I say, would you like to be a part of the Vastra community? And it, yes, what is it? And it, you know, we're, we're do, you know, we'll do. We've got kind of a an LDAP thing that allows you to be able to see other people's extensions, their phone numbers, whatever, their profiles starts to launch in this thing. And then if you get another one and another one and another one, I say the same thing to every customer. So when my customer calls another customer that has my product and I use this drop and route basically it doesn't go out AT&T or some other carrier it drops because your numbers now in the database they goes through my network and right to the desktop of the person well when that happens you look down at the display because all my phones are video display I mean they all have Androids in them you, you can actually see that they have my system it's a little bit of advertising go oh, it's got they have a Vastra too look at that there's a splash screen and an option to do a video in here so you kind of look at that and you look at how Digibyte sort of falls into this it almost seems to me that my Vastra media system and its associated services and the Digibyte blockchain and Digit ID there is something there and I you know I'm not going to tell you too much more than this because there, this is actually a bigger thing than you might think if, you know, I won't say if, when I pull it off. When we collectively the, the pull it off with the help of the Digibyte Foundation and, and me, maybe we can really uh, have some fun and, and perhaps rock the world. Why not? And so anyway, that notwithstanding, 
We are on the cusp of the coolest thing ever, and I have a special thanks, a special place in my heart for Digi the Digibyte Foundation because I'm telling you, you're bringing me back to my youth, people. Uh, this is exactly what I remember as a young man, and and the uh, when Linux sort of eked its way out of the. Uh, internet server world into the hands of average people like me so uh, and you were doing it you're recapturing my youth love you guys think about that